My name is Bill Tribe. My nationality is British, but by choice I have become a Bosnian, or more specifically, a Saraylia, a citizen of Sarajevo. I am now a refugee in my own country. Nine months ago, the Bosnian Serb party, together with the Yugoslav army, declared war on ethnically mixed Bosnia, and since then has torn it apart with racism. I haven't been in Sarajevo for four of those months, and now I am returning to see what has happened to the people I know there, and to try to communicate to the world the feelings, not of the politicians or journalists or pundits, but of the innocent people who are being slaughtered for wanting to live together. The Serbian aggression has had almost no effect on what I suppose I have to call my Serbian friendships, although God knows I never thought of my friends ethnically. The great exceptions are those colleagues of mine in the university where I taught for 26 years who have joined the party of Radovan Karadzic, the leader of the Bosnian Serbs. I think especially of Nikola Koljevic here in this pub where in 1976 he and I drank together. As we approached the pub he said, we'll be meeting a Yugoslav tonight. He's quite a nice fellow really, although he's a Croat. I thought nothing of it at the time, but I've never forgotten it, and to me that remark now epitomizes the racism at the heart of Serbian nationalism. It was another Serbian friend of mine who coined a word for this slow murder of Sarajevo by Karadzic, Koljevic and their thugs. Herbicide. Half my family is still in Sarajevo. My wife, Stenka, is a Bosnian Croat. We are separated, but I hope to help her escape the city when I get there. With the help of the Bosnian presidency, for whom I was working as a translator, I myself left in August to be with my daughter, a refugee here in England. She was about to have her second child, while her husband remained in Sarajevo. I am taking with me documents, which I hope will enable him to join her. The stupid thing was that I, I, the day, uh, in the week I left, a Sarajevo poet, not a very good poet, but I mean a good bloke, published a poem in the local paper about me. And it, 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 it more or less said, uh, you know, well, everybody else has let us down, but Bill Tribe has stayed. And he actually said to the poem, I doubt if Bill Tribe knows where his passport is. You know, and not only do I know where my passport was, but I was on the way out with my passport. I feel I cannot re-enter the club, that is, the special club of the people who have stayed in Sarajevo throughout this, this thing. And you will see this when we go there. You will see this special feeling they have. Friends tell me that Bosnia is finished and that I should move on somewhere else. But to me, that's rather as if someone you love very much has had a horrible, disfiguring accident, and you say to yourself, all right, I'll go and find somebody else. I won't bother about that person anymore. No normal person would do this. You have to go and see the person you love, whatever has happened to them. Sarajevo has been my life. It has given me everything. I can't desert it now. We are in Metkovic on the uh, Croatian side of the Bosnian frontier, uh, about to go in to Bosnia on an ODA convoy taking humanitarian aid up to Sarajevo. Uh, from now on we're in the war zone. I shall see a lot of familiar places no longer looking familiar.
This is Surrey again. I'm going at last to see my son-in-law and his family and to bring him news of his wife, my daughter Tamara, and the children, the new baby that he's never seen. So that's where we're going now. This room is the onion room. This is my son. He lived in England and this is the chair. Onion room. This is the chair, onion, onion, chair and car. When the war started in April, my daughter, who was five months pregnant, managed to get evacuated to England with her small son. The photographs I have brought are Samir's first sight of the baby, the child he may never meet. Sama pomisao da sam dobio drugog sina, da sam dobio djete koje nikad nisam vidio. Ja sam ga vidio na slici. To je teško vidjeti. I have suggested to Samir that if the president's office still needs me as a translator, perhaps I can persuade them to keep me in exchange for letting him leave the city. Samir solves a major problem by promising to find my wife and let her know that I am back. The war has made me homeless, and General Morion, the UN commander, now occupies the temporary accommodation that I was given while working for the presidency. Therefore, I have to find somewhere else to stay, in a city without phones or electricity, or water, or fuel. Through the good offices of the International Peace Center here, we found uh, somewhere to stay with um, one of the secretaries there, who turns out to have been a student at the faculty at which I taught. Uh, we knew each other, as it turned out, and uh, we were invited very kindly by her to stay with her family. Here we are sitting by candlelight and a little artificial light which comes from a car battery. On my right, Alma. Next to her, uh, their father, Mr. Zaychevich, their mother, Mrs. Zaychevich, Selma, who invited us here. <laughs> That's the whole family. Yeah, you are a citizen of Sarajevo. <laughs> 
Okay, take Real. care. Real. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. A citizen of Sarajevo. Not a Muslim, or a Serb, or a Croat. Just a fellow citizen. As the Lion Cemetery shows, the guns of Radovan Karadzic also make little distinction between Muslim, Serb and Croat. I came here to find the grave of a Serbian friend, the sister of the man who coined the word herbicide for the siege which has replaced with graves the trees that used to fill this place. It was this friend who drew my attention to the first resistance to ethnic categories during the census two years ago. There was much pressure from the three political parties which formed the coalition, the Muslim party, the Serbian and the Croatian parties, on their respective so-called nations, to be sure to declare themselves in the census by the correct, relevant national name and with the correct, relevant religious affiliation. I learned that, for example, in a Serbian family, father had declared himself nationality hot and tot, religion Buddhist. The son had declared himself nationality Pacific Islander, religion Bogomil. Later on, when the full story of the pleasure that this unfortunately minority of sensible people had taken in putting absurd answers to these questions, it turned out that some people had put nationality, lampshade, religion, tablecloth and such things. Such healthy rejection of ideological idiocy is something that this country so very badly needs. With vicious irony, directly overlooking the cemetery is the window of the room in which, before he turned to mass murder, Dr. Karadzic practiced his psychiatry. In May 1989, I came uh, for treatment uh, to Dr. Radovan Karadzic, recommended to me by a mutual friend for treatment for the cyclical depression that I was suffering from at that time. I had a good first impression of him, and he said, this will be very easy, there is no problem, uh, I will put you on a regime of pills. And I was rather surprised only that he asked me no questions about the reasons for my condition, which, which were known to me, uh, the background, what the nature of the problem was. He didn't seem to be interested in any of that, merely in directly uh, uh, clinically treating the, the condition. And very close to the end of the period, uh, I felt one day extremely ill. And so I stopped taking the pills immediately. I could only ascribe this curious condition to them. Within 24 hours, I felt better. And now arose the problem, what to say to strict Dr. Karadzic when I went to see him on Monday morning. I came into this room, sat down, he was at the desk, he greeted me warmly. How are you, Mr. Tribe? Kakoste, Dobodan, all this kind of stuff. And I said, oh, Dr. Karadzic, I think you're going to be very angry with me. And the smile, which millions of people now know, spread across that face. And he said, really, Mr. Tribe, why? And I said, well, and explained what had happened. And he said, Mr. Tribe, I'm so proud of you. At last, you have shown an initiative. At this point, I said to myself, Right, when I walk out of this door, I am not coming back. Since then, I have not met the monster. I don't want to. I'll kill him if I do, with my bare hands. Ratni zločinac Radovan Karadžić je rekao da će pregovori uspjeti, ali je pritome dodao da neće odustati od, kako je rekao, suverenosti srpskog naroda na prostorima koje smatraju svojima. Predsjednik takozvane Jugoslavije Dobrica Čosić je rekao da njegova zemlja nema teritorijalnih pretenzija prema Bosni i Hercegovini. On prihvata dogovorno političko rješenje tri naroda bez nametanja modela sa strane. Selma's father has managed to get a message to Jovo Tuta that I have letters for him from his son and ex-wife in England. His obvious urgency sends me fumbling among the many letters I have been given by refugees who don't know if their families are still alive.
Yovo insists that I come for dinner one night in return for what he tells me is the best news he has ever had in his life. seen from this window and much more besides uh, was done mainly from guns firing from my right from this mountain and beyond because this is the territory which the Serbs hold the stuff comes in from there. it can be heard in the background now they are giving us a New Year's Day greeting no doubt down here below me is the Parliament Square I was present on the on Sunday the 5th of April when the people of Sarajevo gathered in hundreds of thousands to protest against the, pro the proposal of the Serbian Democratic Party that Bosnia-Herzegovina should be partitioned, partitioned into a Serbian part, a Croatian part, and a Muslim part. People said, no, we don't want this, and they gathered in their hundreds of thousands to protest against that, a peaceful demonstration. And suddenly, from this hotel where we are now standing, came shots which were fired on the crowd. I am not sure what the casualties were. I believe one person was killed and a few were injured. It was a small event in terms of what's happened since, but it was the first shock of the war. The point is that this city is innocent. This city did nothing to, pro to provoke this attack. On that day, the 5th of April, began the blockade of the city and the firing on the city. 500,000 people, a million, a half a million people, trapped in this city, not allowed food, not allowed water, not allowed electricity. That's it. It began on that day. It began unprovoked. A new bread shop opened that morning, just here on the right. Now, I regularly came up here to buy bread every morning. I, at that time, was still living in the students' hostel, which is just five minutes' walk down the road. And I came to buy bread from one of the delivery lorries. Delivery lorries came around every morning. We used to queue up and wait for them to come. Uh, that morning, for reasons I can no longer remember, I didn't come up here. Instead, I went to see a friend. And, uh, but I do remember that before I left, I heard the explosion, wondered what had happened, saw the crowd gathering, began to walk in this direction, and then decided that if something had happened, there was nothing I could do. I would simply be a spectator, so it's best to keep away. Instead, I went to visit a friend to find that the whole thing was already on their television screen. So I sat there in a kind of numb shock, watching this and asking myself, can this be Sarajevo? Because this was, this was the first piece of mass bloodshed that occurred.
Despite repeated bombardment, Bosnia-Herzegovina TV has managed to keep operating throughout the war, broadcasting the images which the West so often suppresses. On my return, I am interviewed by both the TV station and Sarajevo's indestructible newspaper, Oslobodzenje, which, despite even heavier bombardment, has missed only one day. The temperature in this windowless room is about minus 10 centigrade. Jamila, is it right? Jamila. Well, you, you, you remember pretty well because it was a long time ago. I remember you well, but I, I, yeah. I'm terribly bad with yes. names. Your hands must be icy. Yes, yeah. Do you have at least a fairly warm home to go to? Yes, uh, well, I, I live in a building which has no chimney. <laughs> so, uh, my mother and, ma and I, we bought a, uh, what is it called? Stove. Yeah, stove. So we put these chimney through the windows, but we have no wood. We have no wood. It's very expensive, you know. Just for one a bag of wood, you have to pay 20 German marks. It's very hard. My father got killed by a grenade three months ago. So since then, it has been really hard time for me and my mother. But I hope to survive. <laughs> For the dinner to which he has invited me, Jovo Tuta opens his last bottle of wine to go with a risotto made from just UN rice and herbs. Dragi prijatelju, hvala da si nam došao i donio tako lijepe vijesti. U ovom teškom vremenu puno znači kad neko dođe sa takim lijepim vijestima. Mi smo, evo vidiš, još uvijek svi živi i zdravi, imamo nove prijatelje, prijatelji koji su sa Grbavice izbjegli, koji su došli sa koferom stvari. Mi se znamo zato što, što radimo u istom preduzeću. Sad smo jedna porodica. Eto tako u ovom gradu većina ljudi živi. Nas su uveli u Srbe a nije u muslimane i živimo zajedno when we were leaving grbavica uh, our first neighbor was a serb and he was in their army he was crying for us and he 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 told us that he will never forget us and that was that was a sad moment and as, as you can see, we came here, this place, and driving off from from one part of Serb nations, and we came here and our and we accepted by the, this wonderful man, Mr. Jovo Tuta, who is also Serb. No good any dokaza da se ovde radi o nametanju nekakvih nacionalnih podijela što to bar kad se tiče samo grada nikad nije bilo ovaj u, 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 bilo važno mislim te ovaj nacionalne podjele vjerski i tako dalje živlo se ovdje u jednoj zgradi u jednom ulazu u jednoj kući živlo se ovaj mješovito Miješ, sve nacije, sve vjere, sve ovaj, rase, tako, ovaj, pa evo i ovdje u ratu kad nas oči da podijeli, mi je tu. On my way to Sarajevo, I spent a night in Split, in Croatia, where I met a refugee and her two children. She told me that her husband was a surgeon in the children's ward of the battered Koševo hospital. I offered to take him a video message from her. 
To su nedjeljke s imam ovdje za vas od naše žene u Splitu pismo i kaset poruku što smo mi snimili u Splitu, ona i djecu su bili prisutni. Mi znamo da niste ih vidjeli devet mjeseci i sasvim slučajno smo imali priliku da sretnemo našu ženu i vrlo rado predam vam ovo i ovdje ima i hrana za vas od nje. Nadamo se da ćeš na noć ili poslati odgovor na isti način ili da ćeš moći doći uskoro do nas na nekakav način. U svakom slučaju molim te još samo malo strpljenja. Još samo malo strpljenja i moraš znati da te puno, puno volimo. Malo mi je ovako glupo gledam u ovu kameru, a zamišljam vas preko puta sebe. Nadam se da ćemo se uskoro vidjeti i da se više nećemo rastajati. Veoma mi je teško i ne mogu više da dočekam trenuta kad ćemo se sresti. Nadam se da ću još ovo malo izdržati. Izdržavam jer radim dosta tako da ne mogu puno da mislim na ove sve gluposti. Možeš malo. Vjetnica je nacionalna biblioteka. I ne samo nacionalna biblioteka. It was stuffed with books, with manuscripts, with precious papers. There is no question that the bombardment of this building with incendiary shells was deliberately done. What kind of people make war on the culture and cultural history of a city? Sarajevo has lost with the burning of this building and with the burning of its Oriental Institute irreplaceable manuscripts, microfilms of manuscripts, hundreds of years of history swept away by people who do not wish to acknowledge that Sarajevo has an Oriental and a Turkish past. I ask again, what kind of people would do this? The answer is university professors, Nikola Kolinic of the Comparative Literature Department Alexander Bucha of the Philosophy Department, Vojislav Maksimovic of the Slavistic Department, all of the faculty in which I have had the honor to work for 26 years. Milorad Dekovic of the History Department above all should have known what was being done. I will not mention the psychiatrist. koja je nastala na osnovu konsultacija sa svim stranama u posljednjih nekoliko dana. Prema toj mapi Bosnu i Hercegovinu sačinjava deset provincija. Ever since I arrived in Sarajevo, Selma has been inviting me to meet her boyfriend, a Serb, with whom she has been for over six years. It seems time to find out how mixed relationships are faring in this war. ne samo komfort i neke živote koje smo normalno vodili više ne vodimo, ne možemo da se viđamo tako često. Je li se lakšo se svađate ili je li suprotno? Ne, mislim suprotno. Nemamo vremena. Nemamo vremena. Zato što smo strašno malo zajedno. Poželimo se. Nemam ličnog života, ja nisam tako hrabar kao Selma, ja ne izlazim nigdje. Već devet mjeseci. Nemam živce za nerve za takve stvari. Naravno da mi je žao što ne mogu da pomognem. Na bilo koji način. Tako da praktično sam non stop u kući. Onda kako provediš? Dan je kratak. Ide se rano na spavanje. Potpuno je sve izokrenuto. Iz ležišta. Tako da 
čitam, koliko mogu, onda izgubim koncentraciju, onda uzmem nešto besmisleno da radim, pa se opet vratim da čitam i tako. Tako da je, onda budu nekad i pucnjave, bude pucnjave, bude. Ponavljam, ti si muslimanka, Alek je srbin, mješovite veze, relationships, ima ih Ima ih puno. Ima ih puno. Ja više nego prije, manje nego prije, isto. Mislim isto. Isto. Sasvim normalno. To je sasvim normalno. Mi smo smetnje. Da. Smetnje kome? Pa smetnje... Onima koji žele da naprave čorove za ovce, da ovde žive muslimanske ovce, ovde srpske, ovde hrvatske. A mi nismo ovce, niti hoćemo da budemo u toj. In one fold, Muslims, Serbs and Croats gather together in attempts just to cross the road and avoid the bullets of the wolves on the hills. There is this terrible myth that so many people now seem to believe in, that national identity is a sort of mystical reality that you carry within yourself, that brands you. And even if you don't know what you are, you still are that. It's as if someone born into the Church of England who doesn't actually believe in God, was told, well, whether you like it or not, you are a Christian, and therefore I will persecute you. The world's media have colluded in this by accepting the ethnic categories laid down by the nationalists and labeling the warring sides accordingly. There are 50,000 Serbs inside Sarajevo who are resisting the onslaught of their fellow Serbs. But in the media, Sarajevo and its government are nearly always referred to as Muslim. How are the Bosnian Serbs in Sarajevo to be labeled? How are the thousands born for mixed marriages to be categorized? How are you going to sort and file a city where even now Muslims, Serbs and Croats still intermarry and will continue to do so as long as sanity survives? At last I have been able to get an appointment with Kemal Muftij, the presidential aide, to propose the exchange of my services for my son-in-law's. Međutim, moj lišti problem je moja kćerka, koja već devet mjeseci je u Engleskoj sa malom djetetom i sa novom lebom. I kad sam ja rekao da ću se vratiti, ona skoro eksplodirala i rekla, čuj tata, kaže, postoji mogućnost da sam izgubila i muža i majku i sad ne bih htjela da izgubim i tatu. Međutim, meni je jasno da kad bi samo mogao njen muž da se vrati, odnosno da ide kod nje, onda ja bi mogla bi slobodan da odem. Njen muž Samir je u vojsci, u bosanskoj vojsci i on, ja sam razgovar s njim i on nema nikakvu namjeru da ode bez dozvolne vlasti i ja svakako ne tražim privilegiju za jednu osobu, samo kažem da je to moj lični problem. I palo mi je na pamet da možda mi možemo jedan exchange da pravimo gdje Samir ode u Englesku, a ja se vratim u Sarajevo. To je šaljivo, ali mislim da ta vrsta exchange-a mi... Nije baš izvozio. Ne, ne. I tako sam, barem ja sam obećavao čerki da ću barem to pitati. This is my seventh day in Sarajevo. All of these days I have been very worried about my wife uh, because she lives in uh, the new part of the city um, on the 18th floor of a high-rise block. Uh, uh, yesterday morning, to my great and glad surprise, she appeared in the house where I'm staying. She took an hour, of course, to walk there, as I have now taken an hour to walk here. Now at last I'm able to go and see what kind of conditions she has been living in all of these months of siege. 
My wife and I are separated. We have not lived together for 10 years, but we are good friends. And it has been a great anxiety, not only for me, but for our children to know what has happened to her and if possible to rescue her from the city. Now at last it seems that there is a possibility that we can do this. The trouble with these high-rise buildings is that uh, everything depends on the electric electricity. Yeah. You know, you right. have to lift work on electricity, telephones work on electricity, water yeah. is pumped. Yeah, and above all the lift works on electricity. Uh, you, of course. You have to walk up and down. Yes. How many stairs? 314 I have 314. Mm -hmm. So, but that wouldn't have been so bad. But, you know, you, you have nowhere to go because no side of the house seems to be safe enough. But my bullet first, my first bullet hurt, most of all. The window must have been open. And uh, I walked this way and walked into the kitchen. At that moment, it whizzed past me. And I made this tiny little hole, which I'm using for my bell now. Electricity. And uh, we followed the room. It must have hit there. And made a hole through the door. Maybe if the neighbor is in, you'll see where it ended. We couldn't get it out. There was only okay. the only thing that was in the room. The video didn't make a good And it ended here. And it's too deep in, uh, I think it's deeper than your finger. And we couldn't dig it out. We were interested to see what sort of a bullet it was. I mean, how badly has this building as a whole been, been hit? Um, I don't know how many grenades fell. I mean, this is my lot, eh? Hey? Mm. And I've been lucky. Yeah. Oh, I'll start crying in a minute. Oh, but um, <clears throat> this, this is an application form. What is it? To, yeah, so to can, get me a, so a, press, get a press, press accreditation. All you need. And, um, uh, what does the producer do? <laughs> Never mind, you, you, you'll produce. How <laughs> they ask me, you know, what's my job? Um, I wouldn't know. They talked this morning to Metkovic. Yes. He, uh, Dom talked to Metkovic and to the leader of the convoy, and uh, he says it's perfectly okay as long as you have an accreditation. They'll take you out with pleasure. Very good, thank you very much. Otherwise, you have frozen me on your hands. Yes, Do you know why, why they stopped shelling whom, you know, the, the, the television tower? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, after about a hundred grenades, they realized it wasn't the mosque. <laughs> <laughs> I came here under an illusion created partly by my own apprehensions but fed by impressions gathered from television and newspaper reports uh, back in England. Uh, my apprehension was that I was coming to a not just a ruined city but a totally demoralized city and uh, I feared what I would find. I feared that what I would, f what I found, would be something so horrible that I would never ever want to come here again. I'm glad to say that quite the opposite is the case. The city is not dead. It's destroyed, but it's not dead because the city is its people. And I'm happy today, in spite of all the wreck and ruin around me, to find my sorrow people the same as I've always known them. And not least, I must say, happy at the very warm reception I've been given, because I also was afraid that they would be angry with me for having stayed away for those four months. And then
Look, I, if I had decided to drink some hard, hard liquor, it's my business. I've got good reason to. I've got constipation things. for three days. Nothing has moved in my bowels. Is the drink doing? I'm very dirty all over. I've got a beard as long as Methuselah, right? And I'm glad to be out. Here I am, back in Sarajevo after 10 months. When our film was shown, many people in England asked me by letter or by phone call what they could do to help. Well, I've come to try to help them, to help the Sarajevo people, but to help them by asking them that question, what can we do? Ten months later, the hospitality of the Zetoviches is as defiant of their conditions as ever. Although the day before we arrived, a shell destroyed the house across the road. Selma is missed as she is now working for the Umprofor outside the city, and dysentery has left Mr. Zetovich much thinner than last time. Spirits are worn, but unbroken, and are lifted slightly when the family is able to see our film broadcast on a neighbor's TV powered by a car battery. The film is also shown at the most ambitious artistic response yet to the siege, the International Sarajevo Film Festival, an event soured only by the British government's request to the UNHCR to prevent Vanessa Redgrave and other filmmakers from attending. Why a normal uh, festival in such an abnormal situation? Uh, because we are trying to, to, to remain normal. And that's, that, that's the point. What actually uh, happened to Vanessa Redgrave's part? Uh, Vanessa Redgrave was in Sarajevo a month ago. Then we met and we talked, uh, uh, we, we told her about our film festival. So she said, very good, I'll try to get some films for you. They came to Ancona finally on October 22nd, uh, waiting for the plane <coughs> to come here. And they had all the correct, yeah, they had the accreditation. They, yeah, they, they had everything. Mm -hmm. But finally, uh, there, uh, uh, the paper appeared in which uh, uh, somebody from Geneva from UNHCR uh, said that uh, those people on the list uh, mustn't be uh, in Sarajevo. So, okay, then uh, forget uh, Bosnians, forget uh, uh, dark Balkans, forget uh, uh, Muslims, forget all, uh, all those tribes living on the branches uh, in the Balkans. And let us talk about English people staying in Ancona, waiting to come someplace in the world and not being allowed it to come. Let us talk for the, for the difference about UN siege, yes. which, is, which is the second siege. This is what it, I wanted yeah. you to say. And I don't <laughs> want, I don't want, I don't want to, uh, uh, us to forget the first siege we are having, mm. and we are dying every day of that. I mean, you... What happened? The fire extinguisher fell down inside the, the cinema while the film was in progress. People's nerves are so bad that they thought a bomb had gone off and rushed out. It's a good illustration of how nervous everybody is. One Sarajevan who has reached the end of his tether is my friend Vedran Smilovic, the cellist now famous for playing on the site of the Bread Cue massacre. He no longer plays there because he has now lost his cello. Treba, treba i reći to da si ti ovaj prestao da jedeš 
kada prije pet dana, i ti sad nećeš to jedeš. U stvari, kada sam ostao, ne samo bez stanja, nekad što je preče, kad sam ostao bez instrumenta, moje violončelo je moj instrument, to je moje oružje. Kada sam ostao bez oružja, a što onda, predaj se? Ja sam se predao. Ja više snage ne imam. Ti si otnučio na samo obistvo? Da. Vjeruj mi da mi je žao. Mrsi ljudi ne mogu ništa. Ni ovi živi ne mogu. Živi imaju neke šanse ponekad. Tu i tamo. Mrsi ne imaju. Od mnogo brojnih poziva. Kad me je gospodin predsjednik USA, Jim Carter, zvao da dođem u Ameriku. I nisi mogao ići, jel? Ne. I šta je bilo? Ko ti je sprečio da ideš? U NHCR. Ljudi odlaze, ciljede mara kad se uplati oficiru, nekom šta ja znam. U Grupurovu. Pa da, u Grupurovu, pa nećem. Ne, mi ovdje. Pa ti še onda ode, odmah, na orlite, fino spusti. A taj samo traži... Da samo keš. A most curious situation obtains in this city. It's bombarded every day, yet the Amprofor sits in the midst of the city itself and observes. That same Amprofor distributes just sufficient food to keep people alive. Indeed, we now know that food earmarked for this city is going to the besiegers. Sarajev is full of people who long to get out. They can't go out because the Amprofor forbids them to fly on its planes. Bosnian citizens are not allowed to fly on these planes. Mail. People in this city long for their loved ones, and their lo loved ones outside long for them. Yet the Amprofor does not allow us, we who love this city, to bring mail in to help these people. Sarajevo people say that there are two sieges. There is the siege conducted by Radko Mladic and his Yugoslav army, but there is another siege, the siege of the Amprofor bureaucracy, that for reasons not known to us, not at any rate overtly stated, seems to wish this city to die as soon as possible. Is it possible that there is a connection between this and the curious charade being played out at Geneva, where an innocent country which has attacked no one is being carved up and served on a plate to enemies who are ethnic fascists. No other word will do for them. How strange that the West should take that side and not this. The international community created, basically, or saved, virus of ethnic cleansing. Now this virus of ethnic cleansing, which is now being legitimized in Bosnia by the ignorance of the international community, will spread all around the world, like AIDS. Do you think it will be possible ever to rehabilitate the two million or so displaced persons? You see, I visited the front lines all around Bosnia, and I had many conversations with our soldiers and I asked them what is the your what are your priorities after the war and people have different answers several priorities I'm pleased to tell you that revenge is not one of them All this optimistic view of post-war Bosnia from the vice president Ayub Ganic is shared by many people in Sarajevo This time, of course, Jovo Tuta has no last bottle of wine to open for us. Ako što je na put, kao što ti hoće, nadam se da hoće. Sarajevo se spasi. Na u smislu da sad on pomiruje kao narode u Sarajevo. Ne to li se. Još da neko sa strane ne nametne podjelu. 
Vjerovatno za vrlo kratko vrijeme bi na čitaju teritoriji Bosne i Hercegovine bez obzira kako su oni podijelili i da napravili mir došlo do jedno normalnije onaj odnos. Despite rumors in the British press of harassment of Serbs inside Sarajevo, none of the many I've spoken to, not Jovo for example, not Selma's now ex-boyfriend Alec, has experienced any sort of discrimination. Alec still spends most of his time reading, waiting for electricity, reading again. Primetio sam kad smo došli jučer kod vas, da peć fino gori, možete biti tako ko si olazini. Pa ako budemo živi u zgradu, ako budemo živi u zgradu, ja mislim da da hoću jer imam puno knjiga. Ja više sad ništa ne želim, imam ploča puno i on čuo sam da dobro gore. Da, a sad ja sam čuo prije neki dan jedan neukusni vic o tome kako čovjek dolazi u posjetu nekoga koji kaže da hoćeš kafu, da, hoćeš kafu pečeno na Krliži ili na Andriću. Sve jedne. Uvijek imaš da gore Andrić. Pa ne bih odmah pošao sa Andrićem i sa Krližom, jer mislim, pogotovo sa Andrićem ne bih. Andrića bih čuvao do ovaj posljednje, do posljednje kafe. Evo imate vreca za sur raju s Londonom, direktno zapadnje. The black humor of Sarajevo is getting blacker. The TV comedy team, Nadrealista, the Surrealists, are much fated for having predicted the division of Sarajevo four years before the war broke out. They are currently shooting their fourth series, but are making no predictions about the outbreak of peace. Jer humor umro u Sarajevo, a gdje su suri umro? Humor uopšte nije umro u Sarajevo. Ovo je grad jedinstven po tome što je ovo mjesto na planeti gdje direktno nastaju ubice. Ovdje se iz života ovog ljudi koji nas okružuju non stop dešavaju situacije koje kada se spričaju su u stvari vicariš. Dakle, prva eksluzivna trpa u takmičenju sa bidonima u Sarajevo. Vrlo dobro prolazno vrijeme, vrlo dobro prolazno vrijeme. Hajde, hajde ne. A, izgleda je došlo da nesiče, izgleda je došlo da nesiče. Idi, idi, nuće se, nuće se. Pade čovjek, pade čovjek. Hajde čovjek, hajde nuće se. Tako je, tako je nuće se. Došlo je do nepredviđenih situacija. Tako je nuće se. Ali voda je život, voda je život, kad istere ne smijemo ostaviti. Olimpijski duh u Sarajevu, ne gasi se. Hello. Hello, Bill. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Just like last time, you look extraordinarily cheerful, but you're obviously not cheerful at all. <laughs> I mean, um, how do you feel after 16 months of this? Resigned. Any end in sight? Do you have any, any idea how you'd like it to end? What would you like to, to happen? To end? Yes. What would, well, you like, what, would you like, what would you like to happen tomorrow? <laughs> I'd like to get some electricity, finally. That's all that we think about. Although Oslobodzhenia is still printing every day, its writers, like my friend Gordon Eknezhevich, are suffering the same listlessness as all of Sarajevo. I mean, a, a, a siege has already taken all the energy out of the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we are suffering of some syndrome which I would describe as a prison syndrome. And uh, uh, people almost have forgotten about uh, the Serbs which originally put us in this sea. The last two or three days of really rather heavy shelling, particularly the day before yesterday. Yes. Doesn't this sort of remind people of the, the real cause of, of, the, of, of their situation? No, uh, you know why? It's partly because in living through this war, and I think living through any war, uh, people keep forgetting things. And you even forget what you had for uh, your meal yesterday, and you forget things which happened last year and which happened 18 months ago. You remind me of a friend of mine who yeah. said that she couldn't even remember the names of her favorite film stars. That's the, uh, sort of amnesia. That applies yeah. to each of us. Yeah. We, we seem, and it's a kind of uh, brain damage, I think, just because of all disaster yeah. we witnessed here.
Behind me, across the road, still stand the remains of the truck that burns in the street battle shown at the beginning of our film. This dilapidation, this ruin, seems to me to represent physically the mood that I fear I now find prevalent in Sarajevo. This population no longer believes that the war can be won, no longer believes that Sarajevo has any future, and I fear that many people no longer believe that they themselves have a future. Once the enemy was the Serbs on the hills. They are still there, but now the enemy, the enemies are cold, hunger, dirt and disease, and above all, the cold. Winter is coming. It's a cold day today. We can feel it coming. I myself too am beginning to lose hope. Oh, <laughs> surprise. Hmm. Hello, 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 hello. There's the happy man. Today is the birthday of Goran Simic, a poet who is one of my closest friends in Sarajevo and who is married to an ex-student of mine, Amela. Bravo, Mali. There are candles, but no cake. A party, but no presents. Just one bottle of wine and some Sarajevo oh, water. We spoke earlier of the last time we were all together in this room. About 70 people all gathered here. I remember that party too. And that now only five yes. of those people are still in the city. So that's the point. I mean, I think all the time, well, uh, I want to go out, I want to go away, I want to end up this and everything, and uh, and then I reproach myself and I say, do you love this town? Why are you here at all? I mean, you still have friends here, and, uh, and then I just decided that I'm very, very, very tired. But I've realized that um, I've been out too long, and I've actually come back with the natural thoughts and feelings of the person who was here nine months ago. I've been in a kind of tank. Yeah. And I'm out of step with everybody now. Yeah. Behind me is the city which has been called the world's greatest concentration camp. According to the disgusting Van Soen plan, this city would be cut off from the hinterland that you can see. Can you imagine London cut off from Epping Forest? Now, many of the people in the city are so weary, so hopeless, so longing for peace and normalcy that they would like to see that plan signed tomorrow. I do not know how many feel this way. I understand them, but I would suggest something else. It is not too late it is not too late for intervention. Intervention which, by the way, would certainly have come if the old minarets of Sarajevo, which you can see in the background, had been oil derricks. Let us, for God's sake, for the sake of justice, stop this slow process of sheer bloody murder. Let's stop it, intervene tomorrow, and end it. After a year of negotiating, I have at long last succeeded in getting my son-in-law Samir onto a UN flight out of the city. Black market brandy at 40 pounds a bottle is found for what may be the last drink that he ever has in his hometown.
Lucky to have electricity for an hour. Now back to the candles again. Um, I'm going to read uh, the last poem from Goran's uh, new book, which is called The Sarajevo Sorrow. I'm still alive in Sarajevo. The present tense here means living in the past. To speak about the future here means to dream. The white sheet of paper is my last homeland. My pencil is my religion though I sometimes wish to exchange graphite for gunpowder. We are still alive in Sarajevo. It is a privilege in the town in which death from a shell is a natural death, and natural death is indecency. We are still alive in Sarajevo. <laughs>